The Next Generation spin-off show of a TV series based on a trilogy of movies that was all a strong reimagining of a children's book series at that point has no obligation or responsibility to be true to any specific anything or anyone. Um, but it does have a responsibility not to suck. <laughs> um, and unfortunately for us, uh, Dragons the Nine Realms, it, it sucks. Oh, it's bad. I've always been a big How to Train Your Dragon fan. Um, and when I heard that they were doing a next generation i was i was in a confused state um and then the trailer came out and i was sent into a blind rage and uh when i woke uh, about two three days later from my from my coma um i found out that i had redesigned uh, all of the dragons and uh, recorded it all for your viewing pleasure um thing is uh, that was right after the trailer came out Obviously, it's been a while since the trailers come out, um, and that's because I wanted to wait until uh, the show came out because I, I felt bad about judging the show so quickly based off of character designs, um, and I wanted to give it a fair chance um, before I posted a video about it or anything. Um, so I waited and I watched the show, um, and now I have more things to complain about. So essentially how this is going to go down, I am going to be reviewing the original designs of each of the dragons uh, in order from uh, best character and episodes to worst character and episodes since it's a limited series um, and since there are only four characters to introduce or character dragons to introduce. Um, I'm ranking the episodes and the characters together in one big lump. So, uh, spoilers. Um, I highly recommend... Well, okay, no, I don't recommend you watch this. It's not that good. But I do recommend watching it and forming your own opinion um, before, you know, taking my word for it. I know that there was a lot of people that worked hard on this. I'm not saying that I'm better than trained professionals. Um, I, I just took my own spin on the dragons. Um, but these are just my own opinions, my own thoughts, and, um, feel free to disagree, I guess. <laughs> so the first dragon that we're going to be talking about is Plowhorn, which first and foremost, mm, I don't like that name. <laughs> I'm just going to say that I don't like the name. Um, the name of like the dragons themselves that they give is, uh, Gem Breakers. Um, and considering that they consider the dragon a girl, I really think that they should have called her Gemma. So I will be calling this dragon Gemma. This is Gemma. Um, and I, yeah, I, I thought this was the best design out of the group. I mean, it's the design that upset me the least. I thought it was kind of cool how they did the rock horn. I like how it was... Um, a dragon mixed with a beetle. I, I really liked how they did that. And um, yeah, the, the character the character of the dragon itself was fine. I like how it's tough on the outside, soft on the inside. Um, I, I think the only like real flaw that I would see was that um, I, I thought that the shell sort of felt disconnected from the body, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure how, how best to to go about that. All I did with, with my design is I just added an extra pair of legs um, to push the sort of beetle part of it. I took away the tail because I wasn't really feeling the tail. And then I also um, added some extra tusks in the front because I wanted to um, bring in more beetle. And I wanted to do like stag beetles because they have those big claws in the front. And also because I kind of felt like the dragon sort of felt a little empty in the front for some reason with the silhouette. I don't know why. I just, I just did. Um, let's talk about the episode. So th this dragon appeared in episode four. Um, and episode four, I think was the best executed. Um, which is a lot, to, which it took until episode four to get to a good episode. <laughs> Um, I mean, it wasn't, like, wildly thrilling, but essentially what happens is, um, 
JJ the jet plane and his manic pixie dream girl girlfriend um, decide to um, help out this injured dragon, but they don't know anything about it. They bring in D'Angelo and introduce him to the dragons and everything. And um, he has to overcome his very natural fear of a giant dragon in order to go um, help this this uh the, the injuries and um you know they learn to trust each other they bonding it felt the way the part of it that i can praise is that one d'angelo was scared of the dragon and his reaction to dragons was understandable um and human um and his cathar i don't know quote unquote catharsis um the evolution into trust felt natural and um the dragon trusting D'Angelo in kind made sense to me. <laughs> it all made sense to me overall. But, um, yeah, uh, yeah, it, which apparently asking for character interactions to make sense apparently is a lot to ask of this show. So this is my design. Um, I made the colors a little darker, um, just cause, and, um, yeah, I, I like it. I, I, I like it a lot. Um, next up, we have Feathers or Feather Hide. Feathers, I kind of got... I hate to say it. The original design felt a little lazy to me, um, which is a harsh thing to say. <laughs> I'm really sorry. Um, I, I don't know. It really did not feel How to Train Your Dragony to me. I mean, Plowhorn specifically felt like it kind of felt how to train your dragony, but like in the sense of this is a creature that has evolved over hundreds of years of like breeding and everything and like which is the point. But for feathers, I just um I wasn't seeing it with her. Uh I I, I don't know. There was something about it that was just it felt really too simple. Um and I, there were there wasn't a lot of promotional images when I did these designs so I was sort of guessing it's like it felt like okay I feel like you're having some sort of chameleon thing going on here I took a shot in the dark and thought that hmm I think they're trying to do a Quetzalcoatl which that was absolutely pronounced wrong you can judge me on that a Quetzalcoatl sort of thing because they have a um uh a Hispanic looking girl and um other references that I'm going to be coming back into later um but I hit both of those uh, correctly. The the the, char the dragon in the episode, he the she is chameleon like. She can go invisible, and she can also do mimicry, which they did only in that episode, and then never revisited or ever made it useful, which kind of pisses me off. <laughs> um, in my redesign, I really pushed the feathers part, and I pushed the chameleon part. And I also uh, took a little bit of inspiration from, like, the Deadly Natter just to um, bring a little bit of How to Train Your Dragon back into it, um, which is, you know, super fun. And I, I like the idea of, like, yes, this dragon can change its colors in order to blend into the environment, but I also like the idea of it using its feathers to sort of, like, look like a big flower or possibly try to look intimidating. Um, but it's overall just a very anxious little little nugget um which brings me to the character in question in the episode so the episode this is the second best episode um in my opinion um it would have been the best if it wasn't for um a couple of like at the very end of how they like how um Alex and Feathers, like, finally bonded. Kind of, eh, this is a little, little off on there uh, in comparison to Deang how natural D'Angelo and Plowhorn was. God, I hate that name. Gemma. I'm calling her Gemma. That's right. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, I, I, I liked the characterization of Alex. I really liked how, um, how they humanized her and everything. Um, uh, her backstory and like emotions felt genuine and I like that they didn't cure her because essentially what it is Alex is like the introverted nerd and um her dragon feathers is a anxious dragon that uses invisibility to hide from enemies that's you know that makes sense 
and um, they didn't like cure her anxiety. They just the bond between them is that they're both anxious messes and they both like need time to warm up and they sometimes need space and they respected that. And I was like, oh, okay, that's actually that's actually really nice of you to do. Wow. What did this take five episodes to get here <laughs> to respecting and understanding other people's and, uh, and creatures feelings? <laughs> um, but yeah, um, yeah, I mean, so their bond also made a lot of sense to me, um, when it was introduced in the show, um, and their care, like, the how the character grew in that episode made sense, um, once again, one of my biggest issues is the mimicry, because what was cool is that in the episode, how the dragon is introduced is, like, it's invisible and sneaks into Alex's house, and, um, you know, Alex doesn't know that there's a dragon and just, like, hears movement and then, like, hears, like, it mimic her voice and it's really spooky and scary. Um, and uh, they then go back to it later and they have uh, Feathers mimic a voice again, but it sounds like, <laughs> like really creepy. And they didn't make it, they didn't make it cute. <laughs> like they tried to make it cute. It wasn't cute. And then once again, they never used it again. And what I really wish would have happened is that I really wish that like, because what they instead do is that they just have Alex sit and wait patiently and then have the dragon come to her, which is fine. But I really wish that they had tried to do something more with the mimicry and uh, that it would be something like, oh, this dragon really likes to mimic sounds. How about I show an interest in the dragon's interest and she could use her tablet to like make a soundboard and try to find a sound that interests the dragon, um, which would still be a good metaphor for shyness and, you know, helping a being friends with a shy person and helping them get out of their shell. Um, you know, showing a little bit of empathy to the the dragon, which gets lacking as we continue further down this list. Um, <laughs> I gotta start wrapping this up. Um, uh, the other big issue that I have with this episode is once it doesn't have really anything to do with um, Feathers and Alex. It has to do entirely with uh, Tom, um, our dear, sweet Caillou 2. Um, <laughs> he's, uh, he is such a jerk. And um, in the moment that Alex really needed him, he was like, no, let's not help her. She can do this on her own. But it didn't feel like I trust her to do this. It felt more like I'm a jerk and I'm not going to go help her, even though they try to contextualize it differently. I didn't like that. Anyways, we're moving on to Wu and Wei. This is where I this was this was this was the dragon that I had the most issue with because you look at the you look at the the poster and you're like, why is this the only culturally inspired dragon? Like, okay, I would argue that like, okay, yes, the 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 just from looking at it, you could possibly see that like feathers is based has some basing in Quetzalcoatl. If you know about Quetzalcoatl, Ugh, not everybody does, but <sighs> Wu and Wei are very obviously the Asian, uh, the the Chinese inspired dragons um, with the Chinese girl. Um, and it's it's fine if you want to make a a a. a mythological companion that is very rooted in the same culture as their human best friend counterpart like that's fine I'm totally about that um but you have to do it across the board or else um or else it it just feels racist <laughs> it just feels racist when it is very strongly pinpointed to one character um <laughs> So I will say before I continue, because I'm, I'm about to go on a rant, I will talk a little bit about the character design that I did. Um, I first off, I made it a wyvern. I'll just say just because uh, wyvern just means that I, you take out all the legs and you just make the wings the front legs and it just sort of has a snaky body. Just because. Um, and uh, I 
decided to yeet all um, cultural inspiration and just focused directly on, okay, if this is thousands of years in in the future um, and there are more uh, two-headed dragons, I would imagine that um, there was probably just some sort of crossbreeding in order to get a fire dragon and a water dragon to make a baby. So what I did is I mixed in the monstrous nightmare um, design elements and I mixed in uh, the scaldron to make um, this sort of little combo here. So you can see like one has the more monstrous nightmare eyes, one has the more uh, scaldron eyes, and one's very soft, one's very angry. Um, and I will say that's something that I, I like. I did like about the original design is that, yes, it it felt pretty how to train your dragony in comparison to everybody else, and um, it also like it didn't make exact duplicates like they weren't exact twins, which makes sense since it's a fire dragon and a water dragon sort of mixed together. Um, that I will praise. That is it. That's the end of the praise. Time to go into everything that I hate. <laughs> So this episode, um, Tom introduces, uh, Tom being the main character, introduces June um, to dragons. And she ends up locked in a cave with a two-headed dragon. And she's like, I have to train the dragon. And it's like, okay. And (sighs) the point we were supposed to get to was that she needed to learn to not control the dragon but instead to respect the dragon and then that would that's how she was supposed to earn the trust um instead she just said i respect you instead of showing that she respected them um which if you know you're supposed to show not tell and she just told "Mm." Hey, late night editor Aileen, um, making a note here, um, just because I just don't want to only rant. Um, I wish that specifically what they did is because like what it was is that the dragon kept like hitting the walls of the cave because it didn't know how to um, exit. What would have been smart and cool to do is that since it's a two headed dragon, maybe the two heads are fighting. It happens. It might be a cliche. I'm not entirely sure how cliche it is, but like sometimes cliches work. It would have been fine if it was like, oh, the two heads aren't agreeing with each other. And what June has to do is she has to not only have them trust her, but also help them trust each other and um, listen to each other as well as her. Um, and that is a way to earn respect. And that's it. Um, okay. I'm, bye now. Bye bye. Uh, bye. And on top of everything else that we learned about her character, I was just, I was just pissed off at that point, <laughs> to be completely honest. Because um, it's just, oh, she just, everything about her just feels really offensive. <laughs> everything. She has, like, this odd spirituality about her where she, she does horoscopes and she does tarot and she does talk a little bit about her Chinese culture, but then she also talks about like unicorns and wizards and essentially putting all of those things into the same bucket, which like devalues the real cultures that use like horoscopes and uh, horoscopes and tarot and, and all, all that. And it's also trying to associate those things with Chinese culture when she, it was mixed together like that. Like, the, the, like I get, I, if they tried to make it seem like they were separate things, that would have been nice. But they kind of made it like it was all together. And it, the best way that I've, I've, I've heard it described when I was talking with my friends about it is it's kind of like the L.A. white girl respecting spirituality, which is not very respectful, usually. I mean, there's some L.A. white girls that are able to, you know, do tarot and be respectful. Oh, this is not that case. <laughs> it's so bad. Um, uh, besides that, um, and I know that somebody's going to be like, oh, well, you know, you can't say for sure that it's, you know, really like 
that the dragon is like Chinese based, you know, it could just be an accident. It's like, it's not, it's not actually. I can pull a quote from the showrunner that says, our two headed dragon is hugely influenced by Chinese culture and patterns. Like they did this on purpose and then didn't do anything for the gem breaker and didn't, they didn't do anything for Tom, for Tom's character, uh, for Tom's dragon to thunder. They didn't do anything else cultural. They only did the cultural one here. And that feels wrong. And that's a problem I have across the board with this show is that they have these elements of diversity, but then it just cheapens when you like, when you do stuff like this, like, yes, they have one character that has two moms and that felt respectful. Um, and yes, they had, um, they showed like one character that like is in a wheelchair and they were, they were respectful of that, but they weren't respectful of this Asian culture. They kind of, they mentioned Quetzalcoatl once without any other really reference to Alex being very like in her culture or anything, or once again, it was, it was like a random culture moment that felt off. Um, <laughs> And um, uh, June's mom is also um, a little person, which, like, it's fine. But the thing is that they made her have, like, this eccentric outfit that has a really tall hat. And I'm like, is that... It, it, felt, it felt offensive. I can't exactly pinpoint the exact points, but it felt really offensive <laughs> for some reason. Uh, but just everything that they do, it just feels offensive in one way or another. And I just... I don't know why. I don't know why they do this. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, I would, I would put this episode and everything lower down on the ranks if it wasn't for the fact that episode one and two are sharing the bottom rank here. Um, it's so bad. It is just above the last. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and run on over to our Night Fury recolor that is thunder um which the job in that case was not hard really any everybody probably would have been fine if you did a direct recolor of toothless but instead they did i mean at the same time you know it would it's nice to try to like make something slightly different um something that maybe has evolved over thousands of years um and they did, and they essentially made it that, oh, yeah, they mixed Toothless with um, season one version of American Dragon Jake Long um, with this really broad chest and the nose. Oh, the nose. Um, oh, I just can't. Oh, I just can't. I just can't think about it. Um, I also, I mean, this isn't really a design thing, but all of the animation that had to do with Thunder in the show was atrocious <laughs> in my opinion um the lightning animation felt like it felt like power rangers at a certain point that somebody had painted by hand lightning over top really quickly in rushed hours which i know that they didn't <laughs> um i know that they didn't hand paint it i know that it wasn't done by the power rangers i know that they had computers that could have generated lightning and it they generated it like that. And also the character just had no weight to him whatsoever. But I'm I'm getting I'm getting off topic. Let me talk a little bit about what I did to the design here. So I did I did push a little bit of a couple of elements just to make it like, hey, maybe, you know, the Night Furies do breed with other dragons over the course of mm, a thousand years, considering uh how few were left. Um I gave him a pair of horns. Um just is like a slightly different thing to give. Um, I didn't do too much to the actual wings, tail, um, shape and everything, which I will say it was kind of cool that they did like a little, I kind of saw later as I was watching the show that they did a little swoopy on, um, Thunder's tail, which is fine. Um, I didn't really do much just cause I, um, I had already pushed other things. Like I already pushed the, um, horns, out of nowhere, I had pushed um, the sort of body proportions and everything. So I made I gave him a longer neck and I gave him sort of more gecko-y sort of proportions. 
um, with like body segmentation and everything to make him seem a little more, he, he seems a little more cartoony. Um, just because that's, that's the interpretation that I wanted to do and I did it and um, that's, that's, that's how it is. Um, I did keep like the little lightning bolt pattern on him. I mean, granted if somebody blankly gave me the prompt of doing a night light but a thousand years later I probably would have gone absolutely bananas on different um coloring techniques and like different patternings because I think that um the patterns of different like dog breeds and stuff is like really cool but I like the little lightning bolt in the nose so I kept it um uh, I kept his little blue eyes um I did give him like, I gave him some unevenness, so, like, the pattern on his body is, like, has some sharp edges. Um, I gave him, like, one foot has, like, three of his feet are white, one of its one of them is black, um, and it feels a little uneven. I gave him, like, a little, one of his little extra tendrils, I gave, like, a little white thing, um, just because I could. <laughs> I, I didn't want him to feel completely symmetrical, but I wanted him to feel like, at this point... The nightlights have sort of become like a breed um, with some default settings. So, whew, mama mia, how do I, how do I, where do I begin? So episodes one and two basically spent so much time telling things and the things that they told lent to nothing. Hi, everybody. Uh, late night editor Aileen back at it again with another specific example because I forgot to give one. Um, one of the things that they talked about specifically um, that they mentioned multiple times in the first episode is how important school is and how important getting your 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 work done um, is. And then um, when they 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 didn't even show where school was going to be. Um, and they also, um, didn't show them going to school and they also, uh, never addressed school ever again. Um, and I feel like that was incredibly pointless and I feel like they could have just said that, Hey, um, these kids are at this research facility on summer vacation to hang out with their parents. Like it's part of a program like that would have been fine. That would have made a lot of sense, but no, they kept mentioning school for the first two episodes and then didn't do anything about school and then forgot about school. Okay, bye. We spent so much time doing nothing and getting nowhere. Um, and th there, the parts that were important were, like, kind of rushed. Like, the entire interaction of Tom meeting Thunder and, like, befriending Thunder felt... It it was it was grossly underdone, and they like tried to make it like oh it's kind of like like parallels between hiccup and toothless and um the whole it, that just felt offensive <laughs> that was another thing that completely felt offensive is like anytime that they tried to reference how to train your dragon it was like oh this is totally parallel this is not a parallel <laughs> this is this is uh woefully cheapening the experience <laughs> um Mm, not saying that, like, I don't appreciate doing parallels between how to train the original How to Train Your Dragon relationship and this relationship. Um, but considering how there was, like, no heart and character to how these two characters met up and interacted, that's, that's what's going on there. So, essentially, Tom ends up at this um, research facility with his mom that's at the fissure. That's the whole point of the show. Um, and, um, while sneaking away, because he's a fucking jerk, um, he sees an animal, uh, under some rocks and, um, moves one of the rocks and then the rocks explode because, uh, thunder can just like explode lightning now, which I don't understand what the point of the one rock was, but that's fine. And, um... Yeah, they didn't make sense why Tom needed to be there or why Thunder would see any value in Tom as somebody who has helped him. Because later on, they meet each other again and Tom keeps shining a light in Thunder's face and doesn't have the empathic ability that, oh, if I want to be friends with this dragon, maybe I should stop shining a light in its fucking face. <laughs> 
He just he doesn't have any empathic ability. But then at other times they like try to make it seem like he has empathic ability by like forcing him into a situation where he has to save a person um, that once again felt very forced. Um, oh God, can I talk about the elevator? I'm going to talk about the elevator really quick. I know this is getting a little long, but I'm going to talk about the elevator and I'm going to talk about the goddamn polar bear. So the elevator, okay. One of the things that they do when they get to the research facility is that they go on a tour of the facility. But the thing is, is that they all get into the elevator and we're looking at them in the elevator and like he keeps stopping at floors, but the camera doesn't move. So he keeps describing all of the different levels of the facility, but we don't get to see them. And also we never visit them again. And it's like a wasted five minute sequence that I, I don't understand why it happened. Like, if the rest of the facility doesn't matter, then don't do the tour. Save that time for, 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 for character development later. Why is that a hard concept? Also, there was, like, no establishing shots, which is weird to me because I'm pretty sure that the art director was a background artist for many, many, many years in the cartoon industry. And there were, like, no establishing shots. I had... No idea where anything was in relation to anything at any given point in time. <laughs> Ugh, it was wild. But um, besides that, um, the other thing, too, is that while they were at the facility, another thing that they did is that they were introduced to June and her mom as being old friends. And the way that they did, did that is that they were like, um, t- they were trying to introduce Tom to everybody else. It's like, oh yeah, this kid, he's wild. When he was five, he crawled into a polar bear exhibit at the zoo, um, in order to go pet the polar bears. Um, which is like, normally that'd be like, wow, that's like a really cool piece of character information that you just gave us. You told us a lot of things with just one very short, um, s- one sentence story. That's great. The problem was, is that this is the only story that they told. So they told it four times. Oh my God. So they told the same story four times, like three or four times of just, I mean, yeah, this kid with the polar bear in the exhibit when he was five, right? Oh yeah. But like that when he was five and he crawled into that polar bear exhibit. No, no, no. Okay, character traits. When you're telling uh, when you're telling a story, character traits come in threes. You know, if if a character is clumsy, you have them trip over something three separate occasions, three separate instances of tripping over thing. Trip over your shoelace. Trip over the door frame. Uh, trip over some person's shoe. Okay. Wow. All right. This person's clumsy. Fantastic. Um, if you want to do something that says, hey, this kid is not afraid of dangerous animals, Uh, hey, this kid's a troublemaker, Um, and hey, this kid is empathetic, Um, you can come up with three different stories about him doing that. Why Why just the polar bear? Felt like they were going to check off gun the polar bear, that there was going to be a polar bear later. I... uh, I'm just upset. I'm unreasonably upset over this children's tv show that i get it's not for me but i i also get that i'm i not only am i offended by the weird cultural diversity that they tried to do but it just felt wrong um not only am i offended by that i'm also offended that they used the how to train your dragon name in order to make this show arguably i think this show would be better if it was just a dragon show that didn't have How to Train Your Dragon or the Dragons TV show sort of attachment to it. I think this would be a really a better show. Like, okay, a futuristic show about dragons. That would have been fine. That would have been totally fine with me. Um, But instead, they put How to Train Your Dragon on it. They tried to squeeze out anything that they could any references that they could in order to make it seem like oh wow yeah please remember that this is like a a successor to this amazing franchise um and it just felt disrespectful and offensive on 
many different fronts. <laughs> hey, guess who's back? You bitch didn't, bitch didn't think I was gonna come back and extend this already long video further, but I got one more thing to say and then I'll leave you alone for it. Well, I can't say forever. We don't know what the future holds. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say when I talk about, you know, this show being offensive culturally, um, I'm not trying to speak on behalf of any groups or anything. Um, yeah, you know, like if you, uh, if you're an Asian person and you saw June and you weren't, you didn't, you weren't offended. You didn't see the same things I see. Um, that's, that's fine. Um, just from me and my personal experience, trying to respect other cultures. And, um, actually I literally did work in, um, professionally in like content creation for it with specifically with diversity in mind. Um, and, uh, it just, something about this felt disrespectful. Uh, granted this is a low budget kids show. Um, I don't know. This is the hill I wanted to fight on and I did. <laughs> Bye. Ugh, but yeah. Um, besides that, I think the only other episode that there is to review is the um actual finale which the finale itself eh eh yeah, it's just that's it that's all i can say about the finale eh no okay no you know what i'm going to complain about the finale i'm going to do it. it throughout the entire uh, entire series they kept T like they kept like nesting in that oh there are these earthquakes that keep happening and keep getting worse which in my mind I thought oh is it maybe because you planted a research facility on the edge of a cliff uh, on the edge of a fissure that was created by a comet and that research facility happens to be directly above um a giant underground chasm that is housing hundreds of thousands of dragons. And the answer to that question was no. Apparently it was just one particularly large dragon that was running back and forth through the rock just because it could. And they had to just defeat the dragon and it wasn't like... It wasn't... It... The problem was is that at the end, they tried to make it seem like they saved both the dragons and the humans, um, and that they were some sort of big heroes. It didn't. It didn't feel like it. There. It was just a lot of times where they just kept being like, "Here's the way you should feel," and it's like, um, I have the. I have I have the ability to understand that that is not that is not the, the impression that I should get from this. <laughs> oh man, uh, but yeah, Tom's a jerk. Um, June is I can't believe what they did to June. June deserved better. Um, D'Angelo and Alex are great, and um. I'm very offended that this has How to Train Your Dragon stapled onto it. <laughs> uh, I might do, um, I, I want to be done with this, but I will, I will admit to you, um, in my blind rage while scripting this, I did, um, I did have a blackout moment where I ended up completely rewriting episode one, um, which, yeah, I, I basically rewrote episode one. <sighs> to fix all of the things that I didn't like about it in a sort of similar fashion to if you've ever seen the YouTube series, um, what if the Star Wars prequels were good, like really, really good, where he just summarizes how he would redo the movies um, in that sort of fashion. So I might do a video about that later, maybe. <laughs> um, but that should be it for me. Um, I hope you liked uh, the designs that I did. Um, once again, I just wanted to take my own spin on it uh, as a sort of vent in dealing with 
my unreasonable anger over this. <laughs> um, check out my um, Twitter and social media for to see these images uh, up close and personal. Uh, give me a follow over there. Um, what else do I have in advance? I have, I have things to plug. My commissions are open, so if you like what you see, uh, hit me up and I can draw pictures for you. Um, if you don't want to do that, uh, I also have a Redbubble that you can check out. Most recent design to highlight is a uh, Faxolotl. He is an axolotl that faxes. Uh, he is a good office boy and you can get him printed on a mug for a uh, co-worker that um you know likes axolotls <laughs> um anyways yeah uh that's it for me i will uh i'll see you later bye